Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Last time I walked through some of the basics of starting out in the game, but today I am going to go through some of the nitty gritty when it comes to deck building. To get started with building a deck, the first thing you need to do is take out your collection book, just like so. Go ahead and put this right there. Then the next thing you need to do is open up your decks. You're going to want to grab the one that says new deck. With a new deck out, you have opened up a gateway to unlimited possibilities. I will go through all of the features first, and then I'll go through some deck tips I have for you later. From here, you can select the name of your deck. You can select a deck box. And select your card back. And you can select your table pet. Let's choose Mulligan. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Now all of these options are purely cosmetic, but they are sure to make your deck look fancy in battle. I mean, look how cool that is. Right here, you can select your primary faction. Dungeon Master Primary lets you have an Overlord in your deck. You can only have one Overlord and Dungeon Master has to be the primary faction. You can earn Xerothrix for free in the private room. Follow the guide in my last video to figure out how. With Dungeon Master, your Overlord will spawn immediately at the beginning of the game. Its HP is equivalent to yours, and you also draw one less card in your starting hand to compensate. Monster's Rights Association Primary lets you reserve once per turn to gain an extra mana. You must have Monster's Rights as the primary faction to do this action at your choosing. Otherwise, some cards can do it during battle. Plundering Guild Primary gives you one coin every single turn that can be used to enhance most Plundering Guild cards. Once the coins are spent, they do not replenish like mana does. You must have Plundering Guild as a primary faction to gain coins every turn. Otherwise, some cards can generate coins in battle. With Augur Order as your primary, it allows you to discard one card per turn placing it at the bottom of your deck and then drawing a new one. Some cards have effects that trigger upon discarding to give you an edge in battle. You must have Augur Order as your primary to discard cards into your deck. The secondary faction of your choosing allows you to have up to 10 cards from the faction of your choosing. This does not provide you with the faction ability, just the option to have other cards from other factions. While secondary factions can be very powerful, you do not have to use them if you do not wish to. Neutral cards are special. These cards can go into any deck. You can have as many of them as you would like. You can have a 40 card neutral deck if you wanted, but not like that'd be any good, like at all. Don't don't make a neutral, neutral deck. Whenever you're building a deck and you have some extra space, make sure you check out the neutral faction to see if there's any cards you might be able to squeeze in. This number right here shows you how many cards you have out of 40. For example, three out of 40, six out of 40, or even 40 out of 40. All decks must have 40 cards. No more, no less. You will not be able to save the deck otherwise. These two numbers show you how many cards of each faction you have. If I put in three Dungeon Master cards, and then three Monsters Rights cards. Again, you can have as many cards from your primary and neutral faction as you would like. However, you are only allowed 10 cards from your secondary faction. It will not let me put any more. These bars right here show you your mana curve. As you can see here, by this number, it's 0 mana, 1 mana, 2 mana, and so on, up to 7+. plus. These numbers right here show you how many of each card. I have 4 0 mana cards, 6 1 mana cards, 6 2 mana cards, and so on. The coloration here represents creatures and spells. The green being creatures, the blue being spells. As you can see here, three spells, one creature, three and three, all spells, and so on. Now, while you may look at this deck and think, oh, that's a good balance to have, it's not always going to be that way. Some of your aggro decks are going to have a lot of cheap cards and no expensive ones because these decks are meant to play aggressive and win early on. Because by the time turn five, six, and seven on comes, you either have won or you've already lost. Other decks have a fair number of cheaper cards, but rely more on bigger plays in the late game. 
if you know your plan is to try and win early on, then you can go ahead and get rid of all the expensive cards and then put more cheap ones. But if you know you are going to play more expensive cards, then make sure you have enough cheaper cards to survive the early game. While you can totally have a deck that is majority creatures, as you can see only 5 spells, or a deck that is majority spells, see only 5 creatures, it is important to know what you're getting into when running a deck like this. A spell majority deck has to play very smart with their spells, to remove the enemy creatures, and to use spells that summon your own. While creature heavy decks have creatures that can actually deal with your opponent's bigger guys, as opposed to bringing some spells along with you. For most newer players, I recommend a roughly 30-10 split, as most of your matches will rely on you pushing forward with your creatures instead of having more tactical play, while having spells such as card draw, or in this case, a mobilized spell, or simply removal. While you totally can run more creatures like I showed you before, it can be really annoying to get stuck with no options to deal with their backline creatures. Or if you have too many spells, you can get stuck with a hand with no defensive options to block their attacks. Taking a closer look at the card list now, this is the section where you will see all of the cards in your deck. They are always sorted by mana cost, from lowest to highest. You can hover over a card to read its information. You can tap or click a card to remove it. And this little yellow bar simply means how many copies are animated. When you have your two factions selected, Dungeon Master and Plundering Guild for this example, the other two factions will be grayed out. You cannot add these cards into the deck. Whenever you have the maximum numbers of copies of card in your deck, the cards in your book will also be grayed out. For example, I have 10 Plundering Guild cards. I cannot add any more Plundering Guild cards. But I simply have three copies of one card. When I have a unique card, Unique cards are limited at one per deck. However, you totally can run multiple unique cards in a deck. Or one overlord per deck. Whenever you reach 40 cards, the entire book will be grayed out, as you cannot add any more cards into your deck. If you change your faction midway through deck building, the cards from the previously selected faction will be in red. To know that you cannot use these cards anymore. and then add a card cover by clicking and holding a card. If you don't yet have all of the cards in the game, you can click this eyeball to show you the cards you don't have yet. Now that's about everything you need to know about deck building, so I'm gonna go over a few tips to help you out. When making a new deck, worry more about your primary faction first, as opposed to trying to figure out which secondary faction you want. Because after you create your deck, you may want to switch out your secondary faction midway. My next tip is to pay attention to card synergies. Cards that have the mastery effect make your spells do extra damage. This creature gives plus one mastery. This creature gives plus one mastery. This spell gives plus one mastery. If I have all three of these guys, my dark matter blast goes from three damage to six. There's also cards like Arcane Experiment, where after I play three spells in one turn, it will all return to my hand. Or cards like Bone Brew, which gain buffs after playing a spell. One more tip that I really can't stress enough is running three copies of your cards in a deck. I have three, two, three, one, three, three, three. As tempting as it may be to run a bunch of different cards with only one or two copies, if you find yourself always drawing into the wrong cards at the wrong time, you may want to add more card draw power into your deck to gain a card advantage and then cut out some lesser important cards and run three copies. It's okay to run some one or two copies of niche cards or especially ones that are unique and I have no choice. But to make your deck play better, always run the most copies of your most versatile cards. Well, that is everything you need to know to start building a deck. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope to see you in the next one.